it all started just because I loved the music. I was just fascinated by the music. It's these grooves that move something inside of you, these melodies that can touch you really deep. Three years ago, I moved to Berlin. I think the scene here is really strong. There's something for every niche, every sound. There are lots of musicians. The city is very young, has, has this, yeah, has this, this vibe about it. I lived seven years in Frankfurt because I wanted to study musicology. And on the side, I was uh, teaching myself how to produce and just producing music, DJing a little bit. I didn't have kind of an entry to the scene. And so I thought, okay, let's just uh, apply for an internship at Cocoon. And they invited me and we got along great. So I stayed there for half a year yeah, and helped with the uh, record label a little bit. The relationship with Cocoon changed my way of thinking, my attitude towards music. And I took it way more serious. And I, I realized, okay, this is also work. This is not just fun and doing a little bit on your computer here and there. But this is actually, you have to take it seriously. You have to do something. Two thousand fifteen was kind of the year where things started to happen. Like, yeah, Pete's just playing all my tunes on, on BBC Radio One all the time. And in his last show of the year, I mentioned about my track "Private Show" that it was his favorite bassline of the year. I could feel okay. Things are changing. Yeah. I started the year two thousand sixteen with this track on number one. One month later, Kamezuwa came out, went to number two of the Tech House charts and picked up a lot of support and was also one of the most Shazam tracks uh, on Ibiza that year. And um, yeah, that was really the, the moment where then it kind of tipped over. Ibiza. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I love coming to Ibiza, it's, it's very special. The whole island breathes this music and this lifestyle and partying together. I think Hyde did it perfectly, actually really good parties, really good productions on a really high level. I played before Luciano and Nick Fanciulli. The room was full and buzzing and people were reacting to, to every new tune and uh, I really enjoyed my set there. It was one of the highlights for me for sure. Yeah, and then I, the, that was the craziest thing. Then I won Best Producer of the Year at the Ibiza DJ Awards. That was, yeah, that was nuts. It was like this kind of Oscar moment where you have to think about what do I want to say? Do I want to thank my mom? And <laughs> it was pretty cool. It's a great feeling to see uh, people happy and dancing to your music that's a it's a really it's a really good feeling <laughs> Nick Fanciulli put out Come As You Are was a success yeah, I released another EP with them and um, yeah eventually he invited me to the social festival which was also great it was really good the lineup was incredible and I really admire the fact that he made this festival happen at his hometown at Maidstone you know could have just gone to London, but he decided to make it in his hometown and take the tough route, but give, give something back to his hometown, basically. Yeah, I really, I really respect that. I love coming to South America. People are just crazy about the music. They want to take pictures with you all the time. They want to talk to you. They just want a piece of you. In Australia, people are super open-minded. You can really play whatever you want, basically. The interesting thing about Australia is always the jet lag because it just hits you and you're, you're just defenseless. You can't do anything about it. So sometimes you're just, you're just playing like this and you're just super tired, just exhausted. You feel like, I don't know, a mixture of sick and high. <laughs> and uh, interesting things can happen there. <laughs> In the beginning, I made pretty much every mistake you can make like you you party too much you drink too much you enjoy everything a little bit too much and then you kind of hit a wall 
I think you have to kind of watch yourself a little bit and just be be aware of the dangers. People think it's this big party all, all the time, but you're actually most of the time you're alone. First you get in the in the cab, you go alone to the to the to the airport. You sit two hours or an hour at the airport, and you sit for a couple hours on the plane, and again you you're alone at the hotel. So you're alone a lot of times with all these thoughts running through your head. And then imagine you, you're, you're super tired, maybe you're hungover, and then maybe the thoughts are not so nice anymore. But I think there are really ways to deal with it. I think it's very important to use the time that you're alone, actually, to, to use it for yourself. Like to, I don't know, to write or to, to, uh, to read something good, something positive, you know, to educate yourself and also to build these real relationships with people all around the world. So when you go somewhere, you don't feel as isolated. You, you meet friends again, you know. Yeah, we know what, what the other one wants to do musically, basically. And we are brutally honest also to yeah. each other. Yeah. Like yeah. sometimes we just say, man, this is crap. Or this is just shit. <laughs> once I sent him a track, once I sent him a track and he was just ha 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 ha. <laughs> is this a joke? And I was like, fuck you, man, that's not a joke. <laughs> and basically that, that for me was the sign, okay, I, I should probably just bin that track. <laughs> the longer I make music, the more I realize that this is much more fun if you actually build relationships with the labels, build relationships with the promoters, build relationships with other artists. So wherever you go, it feels like home, you know? It feels like meeting your friends again, you know, when you come back to Argentina and you're wow, so nice to see you again after half a year or one year or whatever. And obviously you get much more done. Moon Harbor was one of the labels when I just started uh, buying vinyl I, I bought every record from them blindly it, it always worked was always this groovy cool stuff and Matthias is also someone I, I admire especially in the studio he has a very unique way of building grooves and producing his stuff so yeah I, of course I had to send him some music and it worked out and now I release my second EP with them The EP is called One Love. The first track is quite percussive and it has a big melody, a big breakdown. It's a bit different than what I usually do. But I really like this record. I think it's a, it's a special record, at least for me. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went to Africa and uh, it's super lively there. The energy is extremely high. It's, it's pure life. We had really high level traditional uh, musicians there who all like delivered, performed incredibly, like there was absolutely no shyness, it was just flowing out of them and we recorded that, it was a proper party at the studio actually. Yeah, and I, I wanted to bring the two worlds together, this Berlin European spirit, the club feeling and the African, Ethiopian, traditional sounds and this raw vibe, just this joy for, for music and for life and dancing and yeah, expressing yourself through music. He was like, hey, I, I did some recordings with some African musicians. Um, let's check the samples and if you like one, let's make a track. And I was like, okay, let's go. And there was this one particular sample, I was like, this is it, we have yeah. to do this and yeah. And it's, um, and it's a really, really nice track. So yeah. every time I play it, uh, people are just coming around and, or coming to the DJ booth and asking like, hey, what, what track is this? What is the name of the track? And you know, it's, it's a good sign. that I decided to change my sound, but I think I'm, I'm maturing a little bit. I want to use less obvious stylistic elements, like, yeah, for the big uh, breakdowns, the stuff that you use, noise and drum rolls and splashes and stuff like that. And I want to, um, I want that my music has more power from the music itself, from the groove itself. And I just want to grow as a musician and just make more interesting stuff. 
in our studio. It's, it's a real team, like we have four studios with diff many different people working there. So you have a constant exchange of ideas and brings a lot of energy and also has a bit of a family vibe. Come here. Okay. And yeah, in Berlin itself, yeah, the, the cold winters, they force you in the studio basically. There's not much else to do. Sometimes it can be extremely frustrating in here when you don't know why the kick drum doesn't fit or whatever. But yeah, most of the time I enjoy being here. I, I, I really like this place. Yeah. I came here for the first time three years ago. It was with DJT because I was living in Frankfurt at that time and he wanted me to co-produce him and engineer him. So I traveled once a month, I traveled uh, to Berlin. I was just uh, sleeping at the, at the couch of a friend and we worked in here. And then I, after half a year, I moved to Berlin and I, I actually, the guys allowed me to stay here. And so now I'm part of the studio. Every day it's like coming to the office filled with almost only friends. So yeah, it's, it's very nice. Nowadays you have to be everything, you have to be a music producer, you have to be a DJ. So on top of that, now you have to be also a businessman, you have to be a marketing genius. You have to develop all these skills, so it's really something that forces you to grow constantly and forces you to work on yourself constantly. And I think that's very interesting and I, I really like it that it challenges me and it forces me to always get better.